there was between Perot and Trump, there were these other politicians who actually did represent this Perotism, Trumpism, which I think of as kind of a Nixonian version of the Republican Party. It's not Hitlerian. I mean, it's Nixonian. Uh, and so Huckabee was one. We're talking about building upon a white working class base in the Midwest in particular. Yeah, but emphasizing it's expanding it. Emp to people yes, of different races. But emphasizing yeah. economic populism, restrictions on immigration, some industrial policy limits on free trade as a way of reshaping and reframing the Republican appeal to the middle. Now, so, so, but then of course, it all gets blown up by the Iraq war. It all gets completely muddled by, you know, those events. But, but what you're saying is that there was a kind of period in the nineties and early two thousands when in fact an alternative future for Republicanism that could have led to, say, a less crazy, well, it would be hard to have a more crazy, version of Trumpism, I mean, in terms of Trump himself, that might have actually had a sane Republican moderate embracing more populist economic and more realist foreign policy goals. Well, well the problem was the money. So you had, the, the money was totally with the libertarians and, and with the neocons and, and the neoliberal Republicans and the Bush way. And the way a friend of mine who worked for the Bush campaign explained it to me, and I think this is true even now, it'll be true in the next election, the, the donors only give you money for a certain number of weeks. If you a certain number of what? A certain number of weeks, a short period okay. of time. They just dole it out in, in little small driblets during the campaign. And if you say something that they don't like, they cut you off. So you don't make it to the finish line. And this explains, by the way, why Gore, remember, he became a shifted to populism in the closing weeks of the 2000 campaign. And mm -hmm. his, his polling data went up and he probably would have won an absolute majority intellect, popular vote intellectual, if he had done that earlier, but he couldn't take off his jacket, like, you know, Juan Perot, and like, you know, start doing the populist routine because of the, of his funders, because of his donors until the very end when the money was in the bank and then he could let her rip. So the, the only characters, and this goes back to Buchanan. And it goes back to Trump, frankly. If you were completely frozen out by the financial and media establishment of one of the two parties, the only people who are going to speak for the unrepresented voters in that party are going to be kind of weirdos, right? They're going to be outliers who don't care. You, so people like Mike Huckabee, Rick Santorum, I mean, they did address that constituency, but the You're only... Right. The only two. And they did quite well in places like Iowa. Yeah, uh, yeah. They did pretty well. Well, Buchanan but the, did But they couldn't, they couldn't well raise the after. money. They couldn't raise the money. Huh. So That's the, your now that it was the money that really... Yeah, the, the only two of it. these populist candidates, if you want to call them mm -hmm. that, who, who broke through were self-financed billionaires. Ross Perot and... Perot and, and Trump. Trump. Yeah. I mean, oh, and um, Trump, right. Yeah. Right. Perot and Trump. That's, that's, that's fascinating. And... And of course, they then, when I mean, you think of Bush having doubled down on, on deregulation, on free trade, and on interventionism, crashed in the sands of Iraq and the 2008 financial crisis, which was clearly related to the deregulation of the banking industry, which everyone again, in this great bipartisan consensus that said couldn't ever become a problem, but it did. And since then, we've sort of been grappling to have a, each of the major parties come with some sort of corrective alternative. Yeah, um, I, th I think that's, that's right, Andrew. Basically, I think that in every election, every presidential election since 2008, the, the public, if you can generalize, has wanted an anti bush right? So Obama, who had opposed the Iraq war, was more of an anti bush than Hillary Clinton was, and he got phenomenal. You know, Romney failed. He was too much like Bush, right? You know, with the, the rich guy who was indifferent to all of these concerns. Trump succeeded wildly as being the anti Bush, right? You know, I mean, and the key moment, the key moment for me was that amazing moment in the debate where he suddenly turns to Jeb and says, Your brother didn't keep us safe. 
<laughs> stuff, stuff. I mean, when 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 Jeb brought that out, and I remember at home, my brain right. exploding, and just thinking, for Christ, are you really continuing to spin this shit about your brother who presided over the worst attack on American citizens in the history of the country, and then fucked up the response? He kept us safe 